You know, in an all debt based system, the powers that be want you to think that debt is safe. And a lot of people happen to think treasuries are the safest thing you can do because they are the largest and most liquid pool of government debt. Well, that's turning out not to be true. But they'd also like you to think that municipal bonds are really, really safe. Plus, you get a lot of tax advantages with that. You need to be aware of it. You need to know about it. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Coming up. I'm Lynette Zhang, Chief Market Analyst here at ITM Trading, a full service physical gold and silver dealer specializing in custom strategies. And if you don't have one, click that Calendly link below, set up a time to talk to one of our specialists and get that in place because time is running short. But what I really want to focus on is a lot of people for tax purposes have turned to the municipal bond market. And in reality, the New York Fed did a study years ago that showed that, no, they weren't really as safe as the perception that people had. And now we need to really talk about it because that market is exploding and you might not be aware of the hidden dangers. So let's just jump right into it and let's have that conversation because there are issuers, rent a muni issuers scored market access for bonds that came out at $1 and are now at 11 cents. Now you have to add a few zeros on there um, to make that more accurate. But the PFA in Wisconsin has issued debt in businesses nationwide. So you still have advantages in the federal level, but not on the state level as far as tax taxation is concerned. Okay, let's take a look at this because that was back in 2020. Now, who is the PFA? Well, the Public Finance Authority, the PFA is a political subdivision of the state of Wisconsin created for the purpose of issuing tax exempt and taxable conduit bonds for public and private entities nationwide. So again, this was an agency that was specifically created to generate and issue more debt for the state of Wisconsin. That's their sole goal, and they can go anywhere in the country to do it. The PFA was set up a decade ago with the sole purpose of renting out its power to issue municipal debt to businesses all over the country, from real estate developers and colleges to nursing homes. So you're buying a municipal bond that you think is safe, but these are revenue bonds, these are conduit bonds. And personally, this is an accident waiting to happen in my opinion and, and also possibly in reality because they are one of the biggest bond markets and they have no employees. Last year, 17 of its bond issues or more than half didn't have credit ratings. So it's just about generating income for the state. They don't really care how safe it is for the investor. It is a step frequently used by borrowers that are, are unlikely to receive an investment grade, according to data blah. Only qualified institutional buyers. Those are buyers that buy on your behalf. That's what institutional buyers are. Or accredited investors, so you have to have a certain level of wealth and income, can buy these securities and those rated below triple B minus. So you can see, and I got news for you, junk is always junk. My mother always said, it's better to have one of the best than 10 of the cheapest. And junk, frankly, is always junk. So what in the world can go wrong? <laughs> Lots of things, especially if you're the holders of those bonds. Because Bank of America and many others see more muni bond defaults. And part of that is because the revenues on a statewide, countywide, citywide level are declining in many areas, particularly in places like Chicago, et cetera. So they have a lot of expenses via their pension plans, their defined benefit pension plans, but their income is declining. And guess what? We're seeing that even in the, in the U.S. markets. First-time payment defaults rose 122% in 2020 
in January from a year ago. Not-for-profit sector has led the defaults, but there's been defaults in not just not-for-profit, but nursing homes, senior living, hospitals, as well as the not-for-profit sector. So bond defaults in the Muni area are going up. What do you think about that? And if you're sitting in them, how would you feel about that? Because a Muni bond blow up exposes flaws in that particular 600 billion corner of the market. And what we don't know because they don't talk about it is how many derivatives. So those big speculative leveraged bets, how many of those derivatives are written against these Muni bonds? So it may talk about a 600 billion corner of the market, but in reality, this is just the tip of the iceberg that we can see. It's all the stuff that's below the surface that we can't see that is really the danger to investors and actually to all of us, because this is going to have an impact on all of us, whether we're prepared for it or not. But sports complex went bust less than three years after its debt sale. Guess what that means? That means those muni bond holders they're taking all those losses. That money is not there. And there's little vetting by agency with the history of rubber stamping deals. Why would that be? Well, let's talk about that. Each year, billions of dollars in high risk projects are financed with little vetting or government oversight, all because they piggyback on the names of state and local municipalities. But there are few checks and balances largely because the agencies aren't responsible for the debt if a project fails. No, it's the project that's responsible for it. Those are revenue bonds. Those are conduit bonds. Are you holding any? You might not know because they could be buried so deeply in your pension plan that you can't see it. The securities are often unrated and when interest rates were at rock bottom levels, some of the highest yields in the industry made it easy to attract money market, money market managers or attract money managers in droves. I mean, have you forgotten as the Federal Reserve held interest rates at zero or even negative rates, how it didn't matter how risky the asset was, if it was paying a yield, it was a reach for yield. But that means that all of those bonds are vulnerable. Remember interest rates, market value of the bonds, as the interest rates have gone up, the not only have the price action of the bonds declined because of that, but also because of the increase in defaults. So it's really like a double, triple whammy. We've set ourselves up for a decent pipeline of for defaults. Well, who's going to pay for those defaults? The investors are meaning you, whether you realize it or not. Here's a great example. Defaulted California plant turns to burned muni holders for cash. The venture firm that once that turns rice straw into panels needs another $18 million. So this was a muni bond. It defaulted and then surging demand for junk muni debt paves the way. Because of that little pickup of interest, you are risking your principal. Is it worth it? No, it's not. You want to keep your principal intact so that you can live to fight another day. Having bonds, having stocks, having cash, that is not diversification because all of those are dollar denominated. Having physical gold and even physical silver outside of the system, that's diversified because you have a tangible as well as an intangible. Intangibles are so easy to, to rob you of because you don't hold it. But the reality is, is if you don't hold it, you don't own it. That's simple. Okay. Still, the plant, which started making panels in November, needs about 18 million more to fully scale up to commercial operations. Bondholders appear to have faith despite the missing debt payments. The company is poised to win final approval from California officials to sell that amount of new securities 
most of which will likely go to the existing investors. This was roughly a little bit more than a couple of three years ago, two years ago, right? Do you get that? So California had to approve additional debt sales after this bond, this municipal bond defaulted. And, and investors are trying to save what equity they have by throwing good money after bad. The company has equity backing from entities, including a subsidiary. How do you like this teachers in California, including a subsidiary of the teachers insurance and annuity association of America. See what I'm saying? You might not even know that you are sitting in this garbage, but you are from those institutional investors that invest your money. What's their risk? It's your risk they're taking on your behalf. Thank you so much. Not me, not me. Uh, let's see. Let's see. So the Teachers Insurance and Annuity Association of America has already borrowed 344 million since 2017 through sales of unrated tax-free debt most of which is in default, but let's just keep going because guess what? That was 2021, right? Wasn't that 2021? Yeah. 9-4-2021. Here you are a couple years later, October 5th, 2023, right? With bankruptcy completed, 500 million Cal Plant Sustainable Building Products Factory in Willows is to be liquidated. The equipment, land, and other assets of the groundbreaking Cal Plant Factory in Willows, which saw investment of more than 500 million are to be liquidated. Where were they before with that? Let's see, 18 million more, ta ta da ta da 344 million plus another 18 million. And what is getting defaulted on? Oh yeah, that's right. 500, 500 million. So how do you feel about that? And how do you think you would feel about that if you own them? And oh, by the way, would you even know that if they're buried inside of your pension? Are you really getting all the data and the facts? Because they probably have sent you a little email about it, which you probably ignored, or maybe they even did a little glossy one sheet if they send you a hard copy of anything, but nothing to worry here until this really ratchets up. And then we've got something huge to worry about. Bond investors largely ignore New York City's 7 billion deficit. There you go. This was just on November 21st. Demand is high for bonds that yield more than 3% tax free. So you are risking your principal for 3% tax free. Well, Evercore's wealth management, Howard Cure, the risk of holding city debt outweighs the reward. I 100% agree with that, 100 bazillion percent. He points to the city's looming 7 billion budget deficit, exacerbated in part by spiraling costs of sheltering asylum seekers and other migrants, blah, 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 declining Wall Street profits and job cuts at major investment banks will put pressure on city tax revenue. Your revenue, if you're taking on more debt, your revenue has to grow at least at the same level as your debt repayment grows. And that is not what's happening. And we're not in that environment on a federal level or a municipal level. Can you see that? So all of these muni bonds that you might think are safe, maybe not so safe. General obligation bonds are a little bit safer because that comes out of the general fund. But when you're looking at conduit bonds or you're looking at bonds that are specific to, you know, a, a um, revenue bond, you better look again. You better think about it hard. You better see where it's at on this spectrum of market values and the risks that is associated with it, because you certainly saw what happened to the Cal bond investors that ended up putting 500 million in, but by 500 million. Don't risk your principal for a little bit of interest. The risk is not worth 
the reward. And hey, it also suggests, let's see, declining Wall Street profits and job cuts at major investment banks will put pressure on city tax revenue, dimming New York's fiscal outlook. That suggests the city's general obligation bonds. Though, so even the GO bonds aren't particularly attractive at current valuations. <sighs> Insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. And we've got a lot of history on this, these results. So does it really matter? Because investors dive into 4 trillion muni bond market, boosting trading volume. Are you kidding me? Look at the volume right there. Highest, well, at least the highest since they started tracking this in 2020. And it's all about demand and supply, but who's really the investor? Is that mom and pop or is that your retirement funds, your pension funds, et cetera? 401ks, IRAs, annuities, all that stuff. Investors rush into the market as yields rose. And now we're being sold that this is a great time to buy and put out duration. In other words, go longer, but this is what happens, okay? Interest rates, current market value. When they issue it, this is when issued, right? Right there. So when they issue it, when interest rates go up, the principal value goes down. This is maturity. You can see how much more the principal declines the longer out you are. So that's what they're wanting you to do right now because the reverse is true as well, right? So they're counting on a Fed pivot. Of course, you have to understand what's happening when we get that Fed pivot, but they're counting on a Fed pivot. So then if the Fed put pivots and starts to push those interest rates down, you can see what happens to the market value of the bond. As long as the bond doesn't default, then if you hold it to maturity, you may get your principal back. The purchasing power is another story. And that's what inflation erodes. And we know that we've talked about it a long time, but you know, again, I have to ask this question. You know, this is not the first time I've asked it. Why would you risk your principal for a little bit of interest when you can hold your principal, your purchasing power intact right here in an undervalued asset that has full global demand? Just a thought. Let's take a look at that. Because what you're looking at here is the spot gold market. And it's easy to control it while the controlled market yet awaits for the ultimate breakout. So it's got to go above here and it very well could do that even between now and the first of the year. But let's take a look at what's happening in the key dates and rarities. This is only the only physical market. There's no paper contracts written against that. So as I've shown you many times, it is easy to manipulate the visible price of a contract, but only gold, only gold is money. Everything else is credit. Everything else is a contract. And anytime you have a contract, you are running counterparty risk. And that's the risk of default from the other entity. Because if you don't hold it, you don't own it. This is your best defense with what we're going through right now, because it's not even so much if you get your principal back, but inflation has shown you that you lose purchasing power value. So even if you get that value back, you hold it to maturity and you get it back, what's it going to buy you? A whole lot less. And that's a guarantee because that's the way the system is set up. So in this, this is what the one percenters do, right? Because a lot of the coins in there will go for millions and millions of dollars. This is the category of this coin and the category that I personally work in, which is a lot lower. And that too has had a breakout. So, you know, while we're still struggling to, to break out in the paper market, what are you listening to them for? Why? They're just lying and lying and lying some more. 
For them, it's just about a pickup and a little bit of money. But the physical only market, that's where you're finding the truth. And both of them are breaking out, especially the one percenters that either write the rules or have the ability to influence those that write the rules. They are clearly breaking out in a very large and pervasive way. So I'd like you to just pay attention to what's going on. Don't be suckered in by the lies. It's their job to lie. It's my job to help you see the truth and your job to follow the links and do your own due diligence. Don't take my word for anything. Don't take their word for anything either. I give you the links. You can find them on the blogs and you can follow every single thing. If you come up with a different opinion than I do, who am I to say that your opinion is less valid? A random hopium opinion? Yes, that is definitely less valid than my well-educated opinion. But I want you to actually have well-educated opinions so that you can put your best interest first. That's what the strategy is all about. That's why if you click that Calendly link and you talk to one of our specialists there, if you don't know how to define your goals, they're going to help you define your goals. And then it's doing the right tool for the job. What are you trying to accomplish? Now, I think it's really important if you haven't done this yet to watch securitization market breaking down. Because again, a lot of this Wall Street garbage has been turned into products and sold to you. So they're making money hand over fist, but you're the one that's taking all the risk. And that appears to be breaking down. So you definitely want to be taking a look at that and looking at what you're holding. You know, you might be in something that you can and choose to liquidate. You might be in like a 403B or something like that, that you have no option to liquidate. In which case you need to get yourself diversified. Really important. And, you know, you've seen it and it's awesome. The materials that are coming out from the three of us, including Daniela Cambone and Taylor Kenny and me. So there's lots for you to look at when you might have a little bit of time Um, Although we are in the holiday season, so you'll do whatever is going to be comfortable for you and your family. We're just trying to get you protected here. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe. You need to know what's going on. Leave us a comment, give us a thumbs up and share, share, share. Because this, my friends, is your wealth shield. And until next we meet, please be safe out there. Bye-bye.